pew pew, pew pew, pew pew, kind of sums up the index rules reveal, but louder. If that is all you needed to know and you are leaving, please subscribe for more in-depth analysis in the future. <laughs> for everyone else, there is a lot to pick from in the massive amount of marine characters and units, so you are absolutely forgiven for missing a couple of things. First of all, scouts do have two wounds. They're no longer the weakest, fluffiest, most easily broken part of the army. There's only the servitors now that still have one wound. So scouts can keep tangling with the enemy just with a four plus save. And when they're done tangling with the enemy, they can get away and outflank from strategic reserve somewhere else. The Terminators. You can't mix Terminator types, as I was hoping, yet. The Relic Terminator's data sheet is meant to go out once the new Space Marine Codex arrives in, say, a couple of months. And this sheet will become their Legend data sheet, so it's not going to be updated again for the rest of 10th edition. Possibly 11th edition, if that remains consistent. Assuming 10th edition does well, which... If we can keep it simple, it should. I'm expecting a new multi-part box set for all the kinds of Terminators. Well, specifically the General Terminators and the Assault Terminators. You see how these Assault Terminators are looking a bit older and less chonky? They want to be chonky. And it's not fair that the Space Wolves get to mix and match their look, having Thunder Hammers, some Lightning Claws, some Bolters and Combi Bolters. And I'm gonna keep pointing out this this thing right here that no one else seems to have noticed in the trailer until I'm proven right that you can mix and match all your Terminator types and there's going to be one box just for them. We'll see when the new Space Wing Codex comes out. The Land Speeder Tornado is sweeping away infantry by flying over them and after it's done that it can still shoot. So this is like having grenades but for free and all you're going to do is fly over them. That's pretty cool. That cements their role as murdering infantry a lot. So I'm going to be getting mine out and putting it on the table because it's been missing these last two editions at least. Thinking of the vehicles, Redemptor Dreadnoughts have minus one damage, whereas pretty much everything else across every other army has lost their minus one damage characteristic rule, which we suspected would be going out in this edition. We thought the rule had gone, but we're just waiting on an FAQ to confirm for this edition if that minus one damage is to a minimum of one. Otherwise, this is basically impervious to small arms fire and punching, whereas every other vehicle is not. So that'll be interesting. Thinking of other vehicle type things, Centurions are so big that they clip through their own data sheet. They have toughness seven like an actual tank in 9th edition. And thinking of tanks, you can have up to four of them in a repulsor. So their four inch movement doesn't have to be that much of a hindrance. The characters have all got a bit of a glow up, as the kids say. The librarians and chaplains, which were otherwise pretty easy to take down, and you would always pick a captain instead of them because captains have auras that can affect multiple units in 9th edition, whereas librarians were just their psychic powers which could affect one unit, and the chaplains could affect one unit, but you'd have to roll a 3 plus for it to affect one unit. Well, they were also pretty weak because they lacked invulnerable save. Now they have a 4 plus invulnerable save on all the different kinds. Primaris, Firstborn, and Terminator. There's the chaplain with the 4 plus invulnerable save, even outside of his Terminator armor. And the librarian, Firstborn, and Primaris confer a 4 plus invulnerable save to their unit, and as they are part of the unit, that includes themselves. So unless they're alone, they're gonna get a four plus invulnerable save. Now I know you didn't come here just to have me read out some data sheets, so I have a suggestion for a really cool unit combination. The Von Karmian Special. You want 10 Stern Guard and a Primaris Lieutenant. You can't have the Firstborn one anymore because these Stern Guard are now essentially being Primarisized even though that particular keyword is gone. So this will mean they can fall back and shoot, they have lethal hits, and with their weapons being sustained hits one, I have a separate video that's up there that explains what happens when you combine lethal hits and sustained hits. And if you add in bolter discipline, then in the Devastator Doctrine, you can be doing mortal wounds on a five plus to wound. 
pretty nice. And with a one command point stratagem, Storm of Fire, it's great for one turn of destruction. And if you can kill a unit, then you can shoot another. So pick something that you can comfortably destroy first and then horrifyingly damage something else or wipe them out too. This is great for popping out a rhino. They may be Pimerus now, essentially, but they can still use a rhino. This gives you one turn of absolute devastation and the rhino means they can get to where you need them and also keeps them alive. It might be a little pricey, but we don't know points yet. That's coming next week. If not, add a Primaris Ancient to the squad to up their objective control score to two and then they can hold on to some objectives after having horrifyingly murdered some people. Of course, we'll have to see how this works on the tabletop. And normally my advice is based on tabletop games I've played and seen. So let me know how the Von Karmian special does it for you. The Vanguard veterans have no image shown. So once the new Space Marine Codex comes out, they may be taken and made Primaris as well, similar to the Stern Guard, and they'll just be their jump pack variation that is still firstborn. When we're looking at faster things, not just the jump pack units, you want the Invader ATV to be a separate squad to the Outriders. Same as with the attack bike compared to the regular bikes, have them separate, because then instead of having the turbo boost special rule, they will get Outrider Escort, which allows them to shoot back at something that has just shot a Adeptus Astartes mounted. As long as they're within six inches, it'll work. Now, do remember, the ATV has the keyword, Adeptus Astartes, mounted, and it is also always going to be within six inches of itself. So if you fire at it, it's gonna shoot back for free. And if we're thinking of having a lot of firepower coming out, hence Pew Pew, the Hellblasters can shoot on death. So they could, in theory, be firing four times in a battle round. You probably wouldn't, but it would be funny. You shoot in your turn, then in the enemy turn, they complete a movement, so you fire Overwatch. Then they shoot at you and kill some of your people, so they shoot back. And that is including all of those Hell Blasters that died from just overcharging their own weapons when you were firing. Every single time. And then the enemy wants to charge, so you use Overwatch again because it's a separate phase, and you shoot them for a fourth time, at least. They were quite a glass cannon unit and likely to shoot enemy heavy infantry, so they would get taken out before they could do their job. Now, they can keep firing even as they go down. Just do note that their plasma guns don't have anti-infantry, like other plasma guns do. Another plasma gun wielding unit that doesn't have anti-infantry are the Inceptors. The Inceptors were kind of a joke when they had their assault boulders, but look at how they've changed. Pistol weapons, so you can fire them at point blank range. Assault, so you can advance and fire them. Sustained hits too, so if you roll a six to hit, you're gonna get two extra hits. And they're twin linked, so you are always re-rolling the wound rolls. And they've also gone up to damage too. So there's no longer this, oh, well, obviously the plasma is better. The assault bowlers are still really good. And with the meteoric descent, they can be set up three inches away on top of an enemy objective and then shoot the enemy off that objective. Their plasma weapons are looking a lot nicer as well. The plasma is no longer D3 shots, it is two shots. Minimum damage two, unlike say, plasma cannons, though they're getting blast and blast is a lot better in this edition compared to the previous one. So I think it'll be about a bit of a toss up as to whether you go for the plasma or the assault bolters on the Inceptor squad, but we'll have to see if there's a points difference for them. Well, that about covers a quick look at the Space Marines. So, as always, my darlings, my viewers, have a wonderful day of 40k.